SmackDown did 2.143 million. Lowest audience since last year. There has not been a number in 2024 this low. 0.58, 18 to 49. Also, all of these lowest since like, and not only was it December, but it was like the Christmas weeks. Sort of, like, that's always going to die. So it probably was the worst going back even further. Had the NBA draft, which, you know, murdered them. And then uh, the other two interesting. NFL. NFL, and NBA yeah. Playoffs. And well, NHL playoffs. Well, you know, there's playoffs. a secret NBA draft you don't know about. It's on the secret oh. board. Now, Saturday's Collision and Rampage was the other interesting deal because Saturday's Collision aired right after the NBA playoffs, which is not the NFL draft. Averaged 621,000 viewers. 621,000 for Collision and a .21. The third highest rating they've ever done. Ever. Yeah. Collision. Yeah, well. And then they were followed immediately by Rampage. I mean, immediately. Like, it was part of the show. And Rampage did 293 and a 0.09. Yeah, these numbers weren't as good as they sounded at the beginning. Stand by, Observer Live. You know, the funny thing about ratings is, mm -hmm. well, you know, it's numbers over like a lot of time or whatever. <laughs> the numbers do play a part, right? yes. Well, let's look at it. So so what does it say when I read the, uh, the deal here? Well, you know, Collision did great, 621,000.21. Largest audience since July 29th, third largest of all time. But why? Well, I do not begrudge them at all for what they no. did, which was you air it right after the uh, NBA, and you tried and throw something big out there. Damn right. And that's what they did. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we got these quarters from Brandon Thurston here, and that first quarter right after the NBA ended, okay, that first quarter where Swerve came out to talk, 1.35 million viewers, 0. 0.49 in 18 to 49. Absolutely gigantic. It was all the people that uh, just finished watching the NBA, NBA and the, the TV was still on. We then proceeded to get an incredible turnoff over the next hour. We went from 1.35 million for the promo. You know, by the time the promo was over, they'd lost, they were down to 850. 500,000. They lost a half million viewers. Like, what that means is, like, the thing started, and, like, within about a minute, probably a half million people just shut off the TV. Some stuck around a little longer, and they announced the uh, Claudio Castagnoli match. And then they started that Action Andretti top flight ass boys match. Hey, Jay White's not one of those. They, they lost another 200,000 viewers during that match. And it just like it just kept going straight down. Yeah. Uh, by the time the first hour, you know, the, the first segment of the second hour was down to five fifty one and a point eighteen. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they they used the swerve promo to hype up a main event. And the main event ended up doing four hundred and forty and a point one five. So you know, it's like in to theory be... in theory it's like a great idea. You're gonna have a huge lead in. So like, you know, do something to get I don't know what the idea is. Like, convert non-viewers into wrestling fans or whatever? Never works. Try to, try to give them something. Yeah. I mean, by the time the show was over, you were down to your normal professional wrestling fans. You picked up zero people from the uh, the, the lead-in. I mean, it's just what happened. Yeah, and then, I, you know, it fell more for Rampage, but not like a ton. It just, I mean, 440 to 314. I mean, I guess that's pretty significant. But, you know, then the Rampage show was was really just straight line. It was just all of the hardest of the hardcore wrestling fans who were going to watch three hours on Saturday. And that's about your number, you know, 290,000 of those people. And uh, that was that was what happened. So, I mean, am I saying they shouldn't have aired it? Of course they should have aired it afterwards. And, you know, if you look at, like, the hourly, the show itself, you know, that was a giant boost for Collision. But the reality is it was just like a giant first quarter, and then it, it really just went back to normal afterwards. So, you know, there's no answer. I mean, no, WWE after, could do it as well. I mean, you know, that first ever uh, SmackDown, you know, that happened at $4 million on Fox. $4 million. They do half of that now. It's just like, it's what happens. A bunch of people tuned in, let's see this new show, and then they were done with it. So...
And you hope some people stick around. You hope some people who are WWE fans first, who are, who are sports fans first, said, "Oh, I like you know, I liked hearing what Swerve had to say, or whatever it is." And maybe they'll tune in on Wednesday. I mean, the only thing you can do is try to take advantage of the time and the benefits that you've been given. And I think they did that. Maybe they should have had Swerve and Claudio go right away instead of going to the six man as the next match. I don't know if that would have helped really, though you know, in the position that they're in. So the only thing you can do is put your best foot forward. And I think they did that with Swerve. And as you mentioned, the show just went down to the totals that it's pretty much been doing anyway. Now, one thing we're seeing is because of all of the NHL and NBA playoff stuff going on, you are seeing Rampage attached to either Collision or you're seeing it attached to uh, Dynamite. I'd have to look at the numbers when it is attached to each Are you show wheezing? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's well, because I have to cough. I, I don't need to hear I'm, any more of that. Yeah, I'm trying uh. not to, but, uh, you know, the the bottom line is, you know, I want to, at some point, I have a feeling we're going to see a third hour attached to one of these shows, and I think it's probably going to be collision, so they can make a block out of the, you know, out of the show. So, you know, I'll have to look and see, but I have a feeling that these three-hour blocks could be a thing in the future. Well, we talked about it last week. I even suggested that uh, if you're being paid for five hours of TV, I think it's better to do Collision followed by Rampage than Rampage as a standalone on Friday night because they had two weeks in a row where Rampage followed Collision and did way better. This week, that did not happen. Now, to be fair, there is a difference here. This this did air 30 minutes later than usual. So, uh, you know, Rampage ended at 1130. So that is something. Like, the later you go in the evening, it doesn't matter what you are. It's just going to be yeah. fewer viewers because people fall asleep and whatever. But I do think that as a general rule, if they gave me, if they said, Brian, Brian Kahn, uh, we're going to give you five hours of television, you know, Dynamite's two hours on Wednesday, but, like, what do you want to do with the other three? You know, I would I would not do Friday standalone and Saturday. I would just do three hours Saturday. Just three hours. Yeah. Back to back. Get it done. It's, it's, uh, and I say that as someone where, for me, that is significantly less convenient. You know, I went to a wrestling show on uh, Saturday night. Oh, yeah. Boom Pro Wrestling. Ooh. I'm going to talk about it tonight on the uh, Brian and Vinny show because Vinny and Sean also went. And, brother... I have not had so much fun at a wrestling show in years. I watched Abe Lincoln. Abe Lincoln? The 16th president. Bobby Abraham Fish. Lincoln. He oh. wrestled on the show. Really? Oh, yeah. And, uh, like, it was so fun. But, I mean, the, <laughs> no, the non-fun Roman? part <laughs> was it was in Vancouver, Washington, or <laughs> British Columbia. There's also Vancouver, Washington. So, you know, <laughs> when you add in the border, it took us four freaking hours to get there. And then it took... I think two and a half or something to get back or whatever. But like, that was my whole Saturday. That was my whole Saturday. So I had to come home Sunday and figure out how to watch Collision and Rampage before I could do, because I have a show I got to do at nine. So, oh, what are you going to do with your family? Well, nothing. I got to watch three hours of wrestling. That sucked. But it wasn't the suckiest thing the last couple of days. But still, <laughs> I like, that's not, that's not fun for me personally. But, I'm saying this is a fair man and a business person. Three hours on Saturday night is better than that Friday standalone one hour rampage. It just, you know. And they, they had, you know, do you guys remember shows. Rampage? You guys remember what Rampage was? There what was, was a Rampage? Show. A no. Second show. The idea was it is going to air after SmackDown. So all those wrestling fans are going to watch two hours of SmackDown. That was a concept. And yeah, then they're the going to find the other channel and watch another hour of Rampage. This has never happened. Almost nobody does that. It never works. So uh, moving to Saturday after collision, at least then you're following on the same channel the same promotion. I think that's better. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers. 
at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.